Okay, so this is a question that I've seen all about diffraction gratings and obviously then thinking about interference and both constructive and destructive. So this was a past exam question I saw which I'm going to talk the way through. So this diagram is showing the conditions and, and the key thing is reading the question is it says it's forming a second order image. So in your equations n is going to be equal to two for this question. Okay. So the first is state the phase difference between A and D. So A and D are along this wave front line here. Now wave fronts are created by the waves constructively interfering with each other and there's actually the point where you have maximum interference. So that must mean that they're along that line the waves are all in phase with each other, so the phase difference, if they are completely in phase, would be zero. Or of course, then it could be a multiple of two pi, so you're like four pi. Essentially, or these obviously correspond to 360, uh, 720, 720 degrees, etc. And there's obviously tons of these if you keep going up in the multiples. Okay, so that's my question. So for this one, it asks you to state the path length between C and E in terms of lambda. Remember again, our N equals 2, and that is going to play a part in this question. So the key thing to know is that on these sort of diagrams, you see me, I'm going to draw a dotted line in here. And another one in there. The key thing here is that these are going to be where the wave fronts are for this particular system. And the distance between wave fronts here, so we're looking... So we're looking at the distance in there. So the distance between wave fronts is n times lambda. Okay, so n in this case is 2. So the distance between wave fronts is 2 lambda. So between C and E, you can see that's two sets of spacing. So it would be 2 times 2 lambda equal 4 lambda. And that's just something you should be able to state by looking at it because it's obviously two slits out so it's going to be two times the n lambda for that distance there. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So it says use your results to show that two times lambda is equal to d sine theta. So what, do we, what results do we currently have? Well, we know that c e is equal to... F uh, whoop. equal to 4 lambda, and we know a c is equal to 2 d. Okay, now using our trigonometric laws here, so we're starting to think of, well, how do we calculate what sine theta is? Well, if you if you know your got your there's lots of different ways of remembering this, but I always remember a soccer tower. So obviously you're operating in this section here. So sine theta is the opposite side of the triangle up here, uh, divided by the hypotenuse. So let's have a look at what triangle exactly it is we're looking at. So we're looking at this triangle here. Okay. And our theta is going to be this one here, so we're going to pick that one, so it's like opposite the opposite the side. So this is your opposite side on this side, and obviously you've got your hypotenuse on the top. So in this case, sine theta is going to be equal the opposite side, or well, we calculated that earlier, that's C, it's 4 lambda, and obviously your hypotenuse is... 2d. So let's first of all cancel the 2 from the bottom line. So that leaves you with sine theta is equal to 2 times lambda over d. 
and then multiply the d across to the other side. Sorry, that's not an. So then we get taking the d across d sine theta is equal to two lambda, which is exactly what the question asked for. Okay. Okay, so you've got a diffraction grating with this number of lines per meter, and you've got a, a wavelength of four eight six. So let's just identify the key parts of the question. So your lambda is equal to four eight six times ten to the minus nine meters. And we also need to work out what d is, because we've currently got the number of slits per meter, but we want the distance between the slits for d. So to go between the slits per meter and the distance between the slit is just a simple case doing 1 over, and that would be equal to point eight ten to the minus 6. And that's going to give you meters as well. Okay, so it's asking you to determine the highest order image that could be created. Now, the highest, how you go about this is you look at the limiting case. The limiting case is when your your angle is equal to ninety degrees, or so then the sine of that angle is equal to one. So, obviously, going back to our diffraction grating, so we've got n lambda is equal to d sine theta, and we say we take the value of theta that makes sine theta 1, because that's the limiting case. So we can effectively cancel that out as being equal to 1. So our n equal to the d, by the way, the lambda, so we've got the 2.22 times 10 to minus 6 divided by 4 8 6 times 10 so minus 9 which is equal to 4.6 dot, 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 dot. now obviously this the, if the limiting case is 4 the 4.66 and the highest but n can only ever be an integer or like whole numbers so if the highest it could possibly use b is 4.6, that means n max would be equal to 4, because you have to round down, because obviously it can't be 5, because that's bigger than the limiting case. So obviously the key thing in this question is, if you're asked for the highest order, it's about making sine theta equal to 1, or say setting your theta equal to 90 degrees, and then solving for n, and that will be the maximum order that you can achieve.